Eleanor Morton. Hi. Because I actually don't drink. But in honor of you, I went out and oh. got a Scottish whiskey, and it's probably Amazing. it's probably cheap. I don't know because I don't drink. But I was going to take a drink for you because I'm so oh honored God. to have you on here. Incredible. But if I pass, what, what, if what's I pass cold? out, <laughs> Scotsman, Scotston. So you know it's real. <laughs> Scotston. <laughs> Scotston. Is that a city? No. Is it a um, suburb? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's, it's just it's it's really an honor to have you here, uh, really. And this is not a formal show. I just have a real job, and so <laughs> I was like in the middle of doing my real job, and I had to run over here and do this. So I'm still dressed for my real job, um, but I did it because I am just infatuated with your humor. You have just blown up on on the internet. You've blown up on YouTube, and. Um, I was, um, I, I don't know what the algorithms did with you, um, but one day I got this Scottish distillery <laughs> tour guide doesn't give a fuck, and I was like, well, that seems interesting. So that is whiskey without an E. If it's got an E in it, that means it's Irish. And if it's called Scotch, that means it's American. And it means it's push. And I was hooked immediately. So are you hearing that from a lot of people where suddenly the, the algorithm gods just decided to throw you out there? Yeah. Um, YouTube was very, I had a couple of thousand followers on there. And then literally about three months ago, YouTube decided for some reason they were like, uh, let's promote this. And um, yeah, I have a lot of comments from people who are like, I don't know how I got here, but I'm glad I did. Or That's me. Uh, which is how I find, yeah, and that's how I find a lot of stuff I enjoy too. It's just yeah. luck. Well, it's kind of funny because like, okay, so for example, I, I'm a fan of UFC, uh, of mixed martial arts, and one of my mm. favorite fighters was a woman named Rose Namayunas, and she's bald, right? So like I looked at a couple of videos her of hers on YouTube, and I'm like, oh, cool, 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 cool. And then the next thing you know, I'm getting like all of these suggestions about bald women. And I'm like, no, dude, I like her because she's a fighter. I don't have like a fetish for bald women. <laughs> so um, it's funny because it usually it works like that, right? But I never yeah. remember. Or a tour guide that they can give. Huh? Are you a whiskey drinker? No, but funny you should bring that up. Oh. Because I actually don't drink. But <laughs> in honor of you. I went out and oh. got a Scottish whiskey, and it's probably Amazing. it's probably cheap. I don't know because I don't drink, but <laughs> I was gonna take a drink for you because I'm so oh honored God. to have you on here. Incredible! But if I pass, what, what, if what's I pass cold? out, <laughs> Scotsman, Scotston. So you know it's real. <laughs> Scotston. <laughs> Scotston. Is that a city? No. Is it a um, suburb? Sure. <laughs> So, so uh, okay, back to your algorithm. So something you did just popped into YouTube and popped it into the universe? Uh, yeah, I think I had a couple of videos did. Uh, oh, there he is. <laughs> there we go. It's no iron if brew. I'm totally, if, no, if I'm totally honest, I do not drink a lot of whiskey, um, but I have been on the tours, hence the, the sketch. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I've been doing the videos, and they've sort of been – gaining a bit of traction and I just started doing them because it was locked down and I was bored and I needed to feel like I was doing something creative. The whiskey one was the, the one that went really big. I think a couple of news places picked up on it and I think that, mm -hmm. well, you know, um, you know, the kind of websites where they, they kind of have videos on them and things. So I think that pushed it. Um, and then I think it had a second life again on, on YouTube, it got big again. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I couldn't tell you how it works. I'm very happy it does. Yeah. Uh, but I guess, I guess consistency perhaps because I try and post every week. So I've got uh, quantity, if not quality. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, we can talk about the quantity, but pardon me, I have the whiskey sweats here. Here. That's uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I can, I, now I know why you guys drink this stuff because it does warm you up and I, I'm familiar with your weather. Uh, yeah, you probably don't need it where you are. <laughs> no, it's a hundred. Right now, it's a hundred and two outside. Um, oh god! Have you ever experienced a hundred and two? Um, I think I might have done. I'd have to double check what that is in Celsius, but I have been to uh, in Scotland. Maybe no, no, not. no, 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 no. We we do get like we do get warm weather, but the difference is it doesn't last for like months on end. We mm -hmm. get like a weekend 
like a week if we're lucky, and then we talk about it for the next two years. So <laughs> remember when it hit seventy eight? Yeah, <laughs> so funny man. So so um so this the tour guide was what got me right, and that was fun. Mm. But you know, if I'm being honest, the tour guide, you know, I can take him or leave him, Craig. Um, but I know tons okay. of people love him. I get it. Yeah. What I love is the fact that you are so steeped in history. And mm. so that's what I am, right? So if you look at some of the guests I've had on recently, I had on uh, yeah. Kate, Kate Williams with the BBC. Um, I saw, yeah. Yeah. So you do a video and you have a <laughs> British, you have a BBC history presenter and her name is Suzanne Primate. Is Whitechapel a place of depravity where cats were covered in sick, men were smoking, and one of Britain's worst killers was haunting the streets. This was the hunting ground of Jack the Ripper. Is that based on Susanna Lipscomb? No, I think people, it's, I mean, it's based on all of those shows, which I am a big fan of, obviously. Um, but the, the, the way the name came about is really random. I was in uh, Whitechapel in London, in the East End. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, with my sister, and we would do it, we were waiting to we had a booking at a restaurant and we had time to kill uh and i said it would be funny to do a, a jack the ripper mockument you know like mocking those kind of every jack the ripper documentary because we had time to kill and that's what we like to do so we did that and the reason i called her suzanne primate this is i mean you you might enjoy this um earlier in the day because she was down in london so we were doing some touristy things earlier in the day we went to the foundling museum which is a really cool museum in the middle of London. And it's uh, it's all about the Foundling Hospital, which was like kind of an early form of an orphanage. Orphans, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar. And um, what, and it's so, you know, they take them in and then they, they retrain, retrain them to do other stuff. And uh, it's it was especially for people whose uh, mums might be, mothers might be, you know, uh, unmarried or kind of stigma and things but um one of the things they did was that they renamed all the children they gave them new names completely new identities and they had a whole list of these names on the wall and some of them were really normal but some of them were really random like just random words and primate was one of the surnames uh so <laughs> when uh yeah so that's a re- it was a real that was surname, a real one so. I thought you yeah. I thought you made that up. I thought, oh, she can't stand Susanna Lipscomb, so she's calling her Suzanne Primate. I thought there was some beef. <laughs> no, no. I I think if I, I don't think I'd be very good at parodying anything I hate because I couldn't watch it for long enough. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I but do, I just yeah. thought it was a funny name. Yeah, it was good. But you kind of talked like her, and she has this mm. way of looking, and she like in, anyway. I. Like I was, always, I was, I was always curious when they do when you watch the history presenters, hmm. and they walk to the camera. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I can't do it here, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. walk right to the camera, and then they, you know they're off the camera, and the camera shows you know has a pan of where they were. And I've always wondered how far do they walk? Like, <laughs> like do they walk there and stop? Do they go like fifty yards? Like I, I've always I can't like get my mind. Uh, she said they just stop. I think- I think they I think they have to do a lot of walking and then awkwardly stopping and then going back and doing it again. And I did that. You did in front of Yeah, in front of several confused people, not with a documentary crew, so it would it, I just looked mad. Uh insane. Well while we're on this, like who is your favorite history presenter? Oh I bet I could, I bet I know. I bet I know. Oh, okay, go on. I think it's Worsley. It is Worsley. I can it tell. Is. I can tell. Yeah. I don't know why. I just I got, got that vibe. vibe. I got the vibe. Yeah, yeah the Worsley vibe. <laughs> I, I would like to have her on. I think Kate Williams is my favorite. And she's very, very, like, super entertaining. Like, she, mm. she's very, very, I wouldn't use the word high strung, but that has a pejorative to it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of energy. A lot of energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where Worsley, I think, is, I think she's much more, um, she's kind of serious, right? Very serious. She knows her yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, she's she's also, but she does quite like you know. She, if you've watched her, you'll know that she has to get in co- into costume at least once an episode. <laughs> and I don't think any of the others do that. And no. I do enjoy that. You can tell like sometimes it's like, I think the reason you wanted to talk about this was so you could dress up as Anne Boleyn. <laughs> and so I I love that passion and that playfulness and also just like, if that was my job, I would a hundred percent 
use it as an excuse to, to dr- you know, to dress up. Oh, yeah, totally. You would do all your stuff on what? What, what is your favorite historical period, by the way? Mm, that's tough. Oh, I kind of like the Georgians. Really? Yeah. Why? Is it because it's all fancy with big wigs and like moles and curly shoes? I like, and- the, I like the fancy stuff. I like the, I think a lot of stuff was starting to change. You've got some fun revolutions happening. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I also really like day-to-day life. I like uh, social history. Mm-hmm. Um, Me too. And I think they, yeah, and I think they were a bit more fun than the Victorians. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, I guess the fashion is, is definitely part of it. Yeah. I just finished, uh, well, I, I, I filmed it in October, but I've just, they've just finished editing a short film I've, I did called, uh, Deloping, which is about, um, two Georgian women who, uh, fall out and decide to have a duel, um, to uh, a fight, uh, with, with pistols. So it's a kind of comedy sketch, um, but yeah, we 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 got the costumes and it was it was a lot of fun. So you just did it. again, like like Worsley, you just did it so you could get exactly, dressed up. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I think if I had to go, I would go with Plantagenets. Oh, because way they back. were they just didn't care. Yeah, I mean they're crazy, <laughs> right? They're all killing each other, cousin on cousin. Yeah. You know, I always feel that the Plantagenets just looked as England as like, you know, a place. To hang out, like a, yeah, like, like they're really on. in France, but you know they're just hanging out here, right? We're just this is the you're you. Where do all the British people go out, outside of Spain to like you know let the, let let their hair down? Uh, Ibiza, maybe. Okay, we we'll go with that. So the British Britain was like their Ibiza, and they just yeah. like came out there and let's build a castle, let's kill a cousin. Yeah. So yeah. And- and it's very, I know this is a cliche to say it now, but it is very Game of Thrones. You've got a lot of fun intrigue and mm-hmm. backstabbing. Front stabbing, kind of side stabbing. Front stab all, <laughs> every part, yeah. Multi-stabbing. Crazy. So here's when I knew that, like, this is this is kind of what got me hooked on you. Um, mm. When I was looking at your, uh, and this is my, these are, okay, so I kind of got sidetracked by your whiskey, but um this is what got me hooked on you was the Craig brought me to you. Right. Mm-hmm. But what hooked me was the blank reads their hate mail. That is brilliant. That's freaking brilliant. Thank you. It's like the Van Gogh reads his hate mail. Dickens reads his yeah. hate mail. But the one I loved was Mary Queen of Scots because I have a thing for Mary Queen of Scots. Dear cousin Marie, hope you're enjoying Scotland. But just to remind you, if you come to England, I will imprison and behead you. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha! Oh, just it's a whole page of this. You know what I mean? She has a lot of potential, <laughs> but she's always picking the wrong guy. Yeah, she yeah, could, yeah. She could have had this Bubbly great gig, wins. right? You know what I mean, right? Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> she's uh, she's kind of uh, she's sort of tragic. I mean, it's kind of overplayed, but she is a tragic figure. She, I think, she was imprisoned by the English at twenty five on that so island. She already uh, was, was no, on, that was in, that was later. That was Loch That's in, right. in, in yeah. Scotland. But but she was in, when she went south and, and Queen Elizabeth locked her up. I think she was twenty five, and I think uh, so. She dropped, she'd managed to fit three husbands in <laughs> before the age of twenty five, which is <laughs> and not one impressive. of them was and not one of them was a good choice. No, no. And they were, but they, oh, but the fun what? thing is they were all bad in different ways. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that should be a book, all bad in different ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I do kind of like that. <laughs> but um, but when you read the Mary Queen of Scots reads her hate mail, you did it hmm. with a French accent, and I was like, "Damn it, that's it, that's it. I'm sold." Because very few people know that. <laughs> I think 99 out of 100 comedians would do it with an English accent, right, or a British accent. You knew I'm, she was raised in France. I'm way too pedantic for that. I think I have a. <laughs> I think I have a weird. Um, uh, affinity, what would the word be with her? Where, like, uh, she's anyone with red hair, I'm, I'm instantly, I think, is great. Um, she's from Scotland, but she doesn't sound Scottish. Another thing I really appreciate, and and uh, and and I think her, you know, I mean, I've never been married, and no one's tried to kill me yet, but every time I feel stressed, I think, you know, what would Mary do? Make bad decisions, actually. <laughs> yeah, find a bad guy. So, yeah, so speaking of that, who is your favorite redhead? Ooh. Outside uh-huh. of yourself. <laughs> I, I My mean, mom. Uh, no. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, Maureen O'Hara, she's fun. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Classic. She's fun. Um, Jessica Chastain. Oh, I'm yeah. enjoying her stuff at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little current. Uh, That's a little yeah, current. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I've got a favorite ever. Maybe, um, maybe someone like Lizzie Siddle. Do you know? No, is she British. She, she was. Yeah, you might. You've probably seen a painting of her. She was. She was a pre-Raphaelite model, and she had a very tragic life because her husband basically. You know, they were none of them really took her seriously, and but she. Um, she. I think it's her who's in the famous. Do you know the Ophelia painting where she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, in the river. Backwards? That's yeah. Her, yeah. Oh, that's some classic she, red hair there. Because it's got the yeah. curls, right? Yeah. That, when you yeah, think yeah, yeah, of yeah. that age, that's the red hair you picture. So that's perfect. Good archetype. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, tragic ending, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we glamorous. Can't, we can't have it all. So or, do you ever <laughs> see a redhead and you're like, dude, come on now. You're, you're letting us down here. You're like, you're being too ginger here. Ease up. Oh, I don't know. It, I feel like um, the prince. I feel bad. The prince. Yes. No, I like him though. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I liked I like him more now than I did. Oh, with the break, um, with the break with the crown. Yeah. Oh, I think I saw that. I mean, I feel I feel sorry for the royals in a way because it's uh, I wouldn't want to be born into anything where my family was my job, you know, and uh, I don't like Prince Charles. Um, but I feel bad for him because imagine if your job was just waiting for your mom to die. That's your whole job. <laughs> How do you know it wasn't? Could be. <laughs> That's true. I don't know. I, I don't know your history. But you're right. You're uh, correct. It's not. Uh, yeah. That I don't would... know who originally ran this show. <laughs> it was my mom. She's out. Yeah. Um, took a while. <laughs> but no, you're right. And then your mom also happens to live forever, right? And it's got to be like double. You're like, Jesus Christ. It's like 77. You're supposed to be checking out of this. Yeah. So. Well, you're a Plantagenet fan, so you know that, like, that's not what the royals are used to. They're used to kind of pretty quick in and out kind yeah. of young deaths, and then you get the crown. Poison. That was the deal, yeah. man. Poison. <laughs> um, so so we, um, with the royals, you know, I met Prince Charles. I met oh. him. I was in the military, and during the first desert storm back in the early 90s, because mm. I'm old, um, <laughs> I was stationed at a place called Waddington, which is near Lincoln. There's a yeah. Waddington Royal Air, RAF. It, it's a base there, right? And so there was a bunch of Americans like myself. We were stationed there um, and, and then, you know, the British guys. And Prince Charles came to greet the troops. And yeah. um, here I am, like, I think because I was very ethnic looking, right? I'm, I'm Latino and I had a mustache at that time and I had really curly Latino hair. And so he just happened to come up. He picked me out of like 400 people to come up and greet, right? I got to tell you, man, I can see why Diane fell for that guy. It's not the looks. <laughs> it's not the looks, right? Though he did have Charisma. very... Yes. Yeah. He had the most beautiful accent I've ever heard. Like, Eleanor, I would have bought him a drink, right? <laughs> and I'm as straight as a ruler. I would have bought the guy a drink with that accent. Maybe that's what he was hoping for. Yeah, he was hoping. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I was supposed to avoid eye contact, and they had all these rules. Like you have to, mm. you have to like look down, and like I don't know. I forget the rules. It's been so long ago. But I always taken that away. I was like, that's why Diana fell for that guy. Well, probably the crown too, right? But yeah. But man, his accent was so charming. But I guess, <laughs> but but that's all he went to. That's what he was raised to do, right? Yeah, you know, he was raised to be charming. That's, that's his whole. Uh, that's his whole thing. So, how did you get in this history? So, were you going to be a history professor? Is this just stuff you've you've just had an interest in? Because you really know yeah. your stuff. I'm really impressed. Thank you. Well, I guess I. So my mom did his. My parents are really into history. Like my mom did it at uni, and I think we did a lot of history. Uh, trips when I was younger, you know, weekends we would go to castles and all kinds of places. Um, and I think I found, found it quite, there's some kind of escapism there as well in something being, you know, a completely different world was, I thought was fascinating, like being alive in a completely different time. Um, and then I did history at, at high school and um the good thing about that was we covered a lot of stuff that 
a really wide range of topics, which I thought was really good. We we did the kind of standard stuff that you do in Britain, where you do, um, you do the Industrial Revolution, you do political reform, like getting the vote, you do World War Two, you do, um, the rise of the Nazis, the rise of Russia, and then we also did a couple of things that we might not have done uh normally which was we did the slave trade which was um mm. really interesting and we also did um for my last year my, my sort of uh the exam is called advanced higher but you know it's like the last year of high school um we did japanese history Whoa. from yeah That's from impressive. um from kind of tracing their kind of opening up to the west and you know that kind of trans their revolution mm. industrial revolution stuff uh yeah and it was just really cool because it gave me lots of different insights into lots of different things and um i feel really lucky that i got to do that but when i got to to university um i did i started doing a module in medieval history but i found it just it was one, you know, it was one semester or kind of half a year and you, we were meant to cover all of Europe and 500 years. And it was, I just, I was, it was so much, it was too much, it was overwhelming. So I didn't stick with that academically because I, I think I, I was scared I would stop enjoying it. Uh, okay. um, mm-hmm. And, and instead I did English literature, which is kind of like you, it's kind of a cheat because you get to learn history as part of it, but not like, not all the boring bits, just the fun bits about why people were writing what they were writing. Um, but yeah, I just, I love, uh, I love edutainment, I guess, is the word for it. <laughs> I love to be educated and edutained. <laughs> you know, that's a really good way to put it. Yeah, because it yeah. is. It really is. I think I always feel like if, if I, you know, I'm having fun and I'm learning, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, also, there's a, a series here, which I think, I think you can see in America too for children called Horrible Histories, which is uh, started as books and they were very like history without the boring bits, like history for kids, but like it was gruesome and rude and kind of not what you would get taught at school. So it was kind of a really fun way to, I think it got a lot of children into history in a way that they might not have done before. Um, And now it's a sketch show with... uh, yeah, so it's it's got lots of like kind of sort of like the stuff I do but but for children and um yeah, I think that was a big thing. That was a really big thing because everything may, you know, it was it wasn't dumbed down but it was on a level children could un- understand. Mm-hmm. And that was good. Yeah. Well- I can, you know, when you mentioned that you, you know, studied literature, I mean it comes that also comes across in your bits because you do some great pieces on the what was the one with the Bronte um, oh, uh, Agne- uh, Anne Bronte. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could sign it as Charlotte Bronte. Um, it w- I'm not Charlotte Bronte. Yeah, so the book is about um, a governess who goes to work for this family, and in the course of this, she just... Got- yeah, no, I know. I, I thought you were going to say that. Um, it's really not uh, <laughs> the same at all as, as, as Jane Eyre. Right. Doing her book signing. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you do the fifth Boleyn sister? Was that... Or no... Is it the fifth? The fifth, uh, the fifth Austin sister. I'd love to be a cool aunt, you know, have loads of nieces and nephews, and they're always like, "Oh, Aunt Mary, she's so there in the parlor all the time, knitting, stitching, embroidering. She does it all. <laughs> Wild stuff, you know." Austin, that was freaking had me on the floor. I've never read Jane Austen, right? But I know it. Mm-hmm. But I get it. Yeah. And, and that was brilliant. That was brilliant. And then, of course, the Orwell yeah. and C.S. Lewis interplays that you do. Oh, I also based a character on you. You did? What's he like? Oh, he's, um... (sighs) He's a tree. Ah, a tree. But what I love is that you commit to the bit, and here's what I've always been curious about. How long does it take you to get that fake mustache and the fake because you really go out with the magic marker or the sharpie or whatever you use but how long does it take you to get that stuff off your face i think uh i think this is a misconception that men men have because uh they don't know what eyeliner can do nowadays oh it's all eyeliner it it's like a it's like it's like a felt tip pen but Uh eyeliner Uh and it just washes right off oh my god Um, i didn't know that yeah magic um 
But yeah, it was funny how many people were like, I hope you can get that off afterwards because... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a Sharpie. I mean, yeah, there have been points where I've had to like answer the door with a, <laughs> with a face on, with makeup for something. and Or like um, my landlady was at the door once and I had to be like, I'm film like she knows what I do, but it still felt like she wouldn't really understand why I looked like that. <laughs> um, or like when you do the lesbian vampire, because I think you really went all out on the makeup on that one, yeah, right? Yeah, with the red yeah, lips yeah. and the white face. Yeah. I, I like I do like makeup as well, so I like having fun with that. And also because I'm so um uh low tech, mm. I think I might as well put some effort into the to the face because <laughs> nothing else, you know, there's nothing else there. So <laughs> Yeah, well, bravo. Well done on the face. Um Thank you. So are there any <laughs> that you've tried and you're just like, eh, that's just, I just can't pull it off. I just can't. I can't do the accent. I can't get inside their head. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I really want to do more on, I feel very conscious of not doing more world history, but it's hard to do world history. uh, And not look like you're making fun. Yeah, from a white perspective without it just either making fun or just being a bummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. just being a sad thing that's just sad. <laughs> right. Um, like, for instance, it'd be tough for you to do like an African tribesman talking about the uh, the race for the continent, right? Yeah. Like, right? Because yeah. that would come. I mean, though, there there's a lot to be mined there about you know yeah. the guys with their pith helmets coming in through the jungle and you yeah, know absolutely yeah, like you did with the um when uh, with the scottish guy up north uh oh god they're not scottish but with the romans oh yeah the, the 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 celts yeah yeah with the celts meeting the romans right i mean it could be the same type of thing but yeah, yeah. It, would, it would kind of, you would you'd be really when when you're one person and you look a very specific way it kind of like it doesn't limit you completely but it's like i don't want to get things wrong i i you know i and also i um in in an ideal world i would be doing sketches with other people so (laughs) (laughs) but you're cheap yeah (laughs) so maybe one day i can do all that with other actors and um uh bring it to life but yeah i think um it's it's so far so far there's there's not really been anything i've been desperate to do and i thought i don't think i can do that because um People have bought into a lot of maybe if you know if they can believe I'm Ivan the Terrible, they can probably oh my God. believe. To be honest, I don't care if you think I'm terrible as long as you don't think the music is terrible. <laughs> favorite, that's my freaking favorite. Ivan the ter- Terrible wins a Grammy. Oh my God, that was so good. Like, where did you even come up with that freaking? Co- were you high? Honestly, tell me, were you high when you came up with that? I am never high. I am way too anxious to be high. <laughs> okay, were you on caffeine? Well, how did you come up with Ivan the Terrible wins a Grammy <laughs> or accepts well, a Grammy? Kind of, it was kind of a meta commentary on what happens when bad people yeah. win things, or you know. And I just thought, who is the funniest person to, <laughs> and what is the funniest award they can have? And uh, that was the two concepts that I merged. So, um, and then I had to decide what what he was winning for. Uh, <laughs> klezmer, uh, reggae klezmer, which <laughs> reggae I thought klezmer. was not real. But then I obviously googled it, and it is a it is a genre. Oh. anything. So, so I, you can listen to that if you really want. You know, cause it, if it does exist, that could have gone south because you could have been like tweeted. How dare you have Ivan the Terrible be? You well, know, oh, it did. That's happen. the thing. And the uh, the downside of the internet is that anyone can decide at any point, you know, that they've got a problem with some, you know, they can find something about you that yeah. they think is is wrong. So, but luckily, uh, if there are mega res- reggae klezmer fans out there, they they took it well. So. <laughs> they took it well. They, we can say they have the best sense of humor of all the musical genres. Yeah, maybe so- they're just happy for the exposure, you know. Yeah, <laughs> right. You should put a little box in your video and say, check them out. Um, so so um, you did a series right before you hit this, right, mm. about Ask Dad in the Garden, which I thought was really cute. I thought it was oh, really cute. You. I love your dad because I'm a gardener. Like, it is what oh. I do. There's, like, two things I do outside of work. And I work out, and, I lo- I'm, in, and I'm in the garden. 
And yeah. so, you know, I, I was like, let me go back and check your old content. And I saw you had 10 episodes of Ask Dad in the Garden. And it's very serious. You actually ask your dad cute little questions like, what do, yeah. you, do, what do you do if you have a, <laughs> what, what was it, a mole? A hedgehog. Or a hedgehog. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. And he walks you through it. And I was like, this is super cute. Uh, dad, first question today is from Gareth in North, South, West London. And he wants to know, uh, he wants some more garden birds in the garden. But is it uh, wrong of him to do that if there's lots of cats in the neighbourhood? Uh, it's not wrong, but you, know, you might want to take some precautions about uh -huh. uh, how you feed the birds. So you don't want your, your bird feeders close to cover where cats can sneak up too easily. Okay. Did you just run the, the dad say, hey, you know what, Eleanor, I'm out? <laughs> um, yeah, so this was during the first, this is 2020, and I'm obviously back in my parents' house for lockdown. And I think my dad had retired by then. He was retiring that year. And so he is a con con yeah, conservationist, ornithologist, not a gardener. He is a gardener, but, you know, he's not a professional gardener, but he's, he's into all that. And, um, I again, it was just that thing of I need to do something to keep myself feeling like I'm making stuff. Because it was, you know, obviously all my life, I do live performance as well and all that was gone. So, um, and he's he's also, um, he used to be like a the guy that the, would be interviewed on TV when something in wildlife happened that needed a, an opinion or whatever. So he was used to kind of answering that kind of question. Uh, he's not, an, he's, you know, he's not a performer, he's not an actor or a no, comedian, no, no. but. Uh, he was very earnest. He is, yeah. He's an, he's an earnest. He very he really cares. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. I just thought that would be a fun series, and um, uh, it was nice. It was it was good. The only downside was having to convince my sister to hold the camera because she uh, has got no time for any of my <laughs> shenanigans. Because uh, <laughs> you did one in the rain. Something. I think your yeah. last one you did in the rain, maybe it was raining. Yeah, yeah. and that's when she said, she "I'm out." <laughs> she wasn't happy. Yeah, she wasn't happy. But I, I only wanted to do, to do 10 because I have to, uh, you know, it's like if my dad's busy, then I can't really do it. And also I wasn't, didn't know if I was going to be at home, uh, how long that was going to last anyway. So, um, so yeah, I just got 10 down and um, uh, maybe I, I've had other people say, uh, I think my mum found out the other day that my dad is a Google result. Like you can, people have searched Eleanor Morton dad. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> why are they searching him and not me? And I, I said, I think it's because of that, but I'm sorry. Like, um, so yeah, it was uh, it's just a, a nice thing really. Yeah. He was our, awesome. who's, the, who's the funniest person in your family? Um, oh, that's tricky. Maybe my sister. Really? Sometimes un unintentionally. Yeah. Not in the same way. She doesn't have an urge to perform, you know, um yeah but you know i know some people who never try mm -hmm. to be funny they don't have bits they don't have jokes yeah. but the yeah. way they say things it just cracks me <laughs> up like you know what i mean like i would watch them just talk because the way they yeah. talk and the way they will say a sentence it just makes you laugh so i don't yeah. know is she kind of one of them she just presents stuff in a or unintentionally funny yeah she also gets herself into situations where she how did you get into that situation? She she's will like, sort of she'll she'll come home and she'll be like, "This happened," and it's like that would never happen to me, you know. Um, she accident, uh, for example, she had to get some teeth removed, and they gave her Valium because she doesn't like injections. So, uh, and then a few days later, she's in Starbucks. She's got a headache. She pulls out some painkillers, and then she starts kind of feeling really weird and she checks the box and it's the Valium and she's like taking a massive dose of Valium in Starbucks and she's <laughs> sitting in Starbucks really high just thinking like just watching people and being like oh okay I've got to I've got to make sure no one's figured out that this is happening so your your sister is like the best friend in a rom-com yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a very good way to describe it yeah it's always getting into some shenanigans so yes. um where, where, how big do you think this is going to get with you? Do you want to continue to do this or do you want to get out of it? I mean, it's blowing up. It really is. Um, thank you. I don't, yeah. I mean, I'd like to just, my kind of career goal is just to keep making stuff and 
keep enjoying making stuff. Um, I'd, I'd like to do more. Uh, I mean, I started doing it because of, I started doing these videos because of lockdown and in an ideal world, you know, I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not a producer. I'm not an editor. I'm not any of those things. I'd, I'd love to be in a situation where I just do the writing and the performing and I don't have to worry about that other stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've, I, I'm still doing live stuff and yeah. I'm doing, um, I'm, I'm just doing these while I enjoy it and, and maybe I'll get more high tech or whatever, but, uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't have like a solid plan, I guess just keep doing if it, if it works, it works. Yeah. You know, that's my, <laughs> and this wasn't planned, right? So whatever, whatever no, happens. No. So it's, no. it's funny. Cause a lot of YouTube, a lot of people on YouTube, mm. they all started during the pandemic. Like I started my show in the pandemic cause like mm. I was bored and I wanted to like yeah. do stuff and I'm like, well, this is a good yeah. time. You know, yeah. and, and there's a political person that I is on a show that I watch or, you know, watch on YouTube. And she did the same thing. She was like, hey, it was during pandemic. I had nothing to do. So I put a curtain behind me and a microphone like boom. Yeah. So I think we're I think there are a number of people like that. So, yeah. And, and it was funny. I sort of, you know, I've got some earlier stuff. I kind of tried to do online comedy and I because I knew that was something, you know, that people you know, you you should try and do if you can if you're a performer, and it was always it was just felt kind of forced for me. Like I just didn't enjoy it, and I felt like I was trying to like tap into a zeitgeist that I wasn't really. And then kind of the the pandemic came along, and I don't know about you, but it was suddenly like the pressure was off. There was no expectation, so I'm just gonna do whatever weird stuff I think is funny, and uh, as is often the case, that was the stuff that actually did well because what you think is funny is often what other people think is funny. So yeah. once I start, once I stopped second guessing what might be like viral or like what people wanted to see and I just did what I thought was good, mm -hmm. uh, you find people who like that stuff. Yeah. And a lot of people do. And you like, honestly, like when I was talking to my producers, I'm going to get Eleanor Morton on mm. said, because I want to be able to tell people I had her when she was still just on YouTube. Before, before she was in the movies. I had her before she was on TV. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because you've been doing stand-up since you were 18. Mm. How, yeah. how, how was that at 18? Because I cannot think of anything more frightening. And But you know what? I have, I have a theory. Because yeah. your act, you, you kind of play. And, and tell me if I'm wrong. Well, I know you will. Never mind. I don't have to give you permission <laughs> to tell me I'm wrong. But, I mean, feel free. Um, you come across as awkward. Um, in fact, mm. the opening of one of the uh, bits, I think it might be one of your mm. most watched bits on there where you talk about the boob sweat and you start yeah. off by mumbling and you look very like, you know what I mean? You look. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering, I wonder if she's doing that because if people think, oh, you suck. You're like, well, yeah, that's what I was going for. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I was going for a person that sucked. So, yeah, nailed it. So, I mean, yeah. how did you do that? It's really brave to do that. It, it, it is. There's something about really leaning. Yeah, because I was really nervous. And, oh, you were? Uh, when, I, when, I, when I started, I was really, you know, you get less nervous as you do it, which is good, I think. But, yeah, I, I um, but, you know, I was a very, like, I always wanted to be a performer. I wanted to be an actor. And then I got into the idea of doing comedy. And uh, But I'm a very anxious person person or I was and you know socially awkward as well and but I found that when you lean into it it, mm -hmm. it becomes almost more freeing whereas if you're trying to you know when like it's there's nothing worse than like when you're trying to, to relax and like just be cool just be cool yeah, 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 yeah. and then you get more awkward <laughs> right, you know right. so there's something kind of freeing about going you know what I'm weird I'm awkward here I am yeah um, yeah and uh I, I am less I am definitely like less like that now I think um, on stage, I'm a bit more chill, but yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. That's kind of the, the, the thing behind it is, is kind of become the thing you're scared of being. Oh my God. I was uncomfortable watching it. In fact, the first time I watched it, I fast forwarded it because I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to watch this. I'm so embarrassed for her. <laughs> and then I fast forwarded to the punchline and I was like, ah, oh, shit. Okay. Who's the setup? <laughs> but then I was like, but was it, <laughs> but was it a setup? Um, well done though. And then you have the raps, you rap. Uh
Tap water is legally free. I said tap water is legally free. <laughs> tap water is legally free. I said tap water is legally free. It is. Tap water is legally free, everyone. Tap water is legally free. Come on. Tap water is legally free unless, of course, you're in Germany. Because I'm really good at doing das clubbing. It's been like Gaberstaffler. I'm really good at doing the clubbing. It's EU regulations. I don't know. I, I saw one we, we did clubbing. That yeah, was, that that was actually pretty good. It was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, well done. I, I, I'm I'm into rap. Uh, I know that's I know that I'm not the kind of person that rap you, would you, like. You do look like it. <laughs> you look like it would be but I think at the like if to make it really nerdy, at the end of the day, rap is just wordplay and it's poetry, and uh, I really love word sounds. I guess you might say like I love uh -huh. the way you can. There's something about it's almost like you've done a puzzle or something. If you can, if you can wrap something within the kind of time frame, or you know, there's, there's something about being able to do that that has some kind of serotonin endorphin thing for me. And I think other people who are into that know what, I, what I'm talking about. When you kind of you get this kind of high you get off of doing a rap in a <laughs> yeah yeah getting the words right and everything in that. No, yeah, no, I, I totally understand what you mean. Completely understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in my job, I have to testify. I'm in politics, right? And so mm. you present bills and you have to go up there and you have to testify, right? And so you're up there and you're doing this, but it's kind of, it gives you a high when you're done. Well, you don't walk yeah. away and go, mm. you walk away going, yeah. Because, you know, you're right. You're filled with those endorphins. You're filled with that energy. Yeah. And there's something about like the shape of words. And I know that sounds mm. weird. Sounds kind of meta. No, I know what you but, mean. But the, playing with the shape of words or playing with the amalgamated shape of words, you know, when you put them together and can kind of shape them, um, especially we can do it like on the fly. Mm. It is. It is. It's a pretty awesome feeling. So I've yeah. never rapped. I've been a lot. <laughs> I've been around a lot of rappers, but um, I can understand. Give it a go. You never know. Huh? I should give it a go. Give it a go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey. No, you don't have to do it right now. But uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn it! Uh, this is my time. Car. Bring my beatbox. <laughs> hey, so where did your accent go? Because that's when that's the other thing. You're question. Scottish. You're Scottish. Yeah. You said, and I'm not going to say this because I heard you go off on somebody on Twitter. So I'm not going to wander <laughs> into that minefield. But you do, you know, you have a very British accent. Um, yeah. I'm not going to say it sounds posh. You I, I mean, I mean, I. I Maybe, hopefully not as posh as Prince Charles, but I guess. Oh, my God. I know Americans get very excited about it. So. Eleanor, I would have bought him a drink <laughs> just off that freaking accent. I swear he's to God. I mean, he's not that he would need to anyway, but he's probably never paid for a drink in his life. Because okay. he's like, <laughs> You're right. where's the American in the no, room? You've he's paid for his drink. drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, uh, that's the, the therein lies the rub. Um, it's a very boring story. I think. Because I do get like, I, and I don't want to get annoyed about it because um, it's, I totally get why people would ask, but it, I think the, the, the thing that's annoying is it's quite a boring story and I don't think people really understand even when I tell it. So basically, I have always sounded like this. Uh, I'm, I'm from uh, Edinburgh. I was born here. My parents are, were, were born and brought up in England. Oh, okay. They are from Scottish families. So what I've kind of got, and I and I never and I picked up their accent as opposed to Makes sense. anyone else's. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's annoying is I'm not, you know, I have this accent, but I don't really um, have like feel any affinity with it because I am not English, and most of my family isn't English. So I've got this kind of, it's kind of like, where did this come from? You know, um, <laughs> where did this come from? But um, but I think it means that because I was always until I was kind of in high school I wasn't really because Edin I don't know if you've been to Edinburgh I have um, mm -hmm. oh cool nice yeah, beautiful um, it is full of English people so I think <laughs> I think I was surrounded by enough English people that I didn't notice that I sounded different until I got to high school and then people were pointing out a lot and by then it's like well I could change it but then people would like then there'd be more questions so um, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, everything I know about Scotland, I've learned from either Shetland or Still Game. Like, Oh, yeah, uh, nice. A nice cross-section. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right. It is a good cross-section. Um, <laughs> that is. You're right. And um, so, but, you know, those are very different accents. Um, yeah, I oh, think, yeah. I mean, I, 
I, I'm, I can't, I can't believe, I can't imagine uh, being American and being introduced to the Shetland accent. Oh like. my god, it's kind of discontinuity, and it's just, I suppose, a kind of seize the day poem. Um, it's about relationships. If you're like me, you're going along a beach and you pick up a stone and you hit a tack at home with you. You kind of bear notice. But this time I was walking on a beach in Shetland. There was a beautiful, perfect heart-shaped stone, but it was barely big. And I couldn't get it on the plain home. It's so different. Well, I think because it's part like Danish too, right? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. no, Norse as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but then I think in still game, it's Glaswegian or it is Glaswegian. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, do you speak Scott or Gaelic? I do. I, I well, I, I studied at, at Gaelic University. Not Gaelic. Can't do Gaelic. So I'm terrible at languages. I, I'm quite good at sounding like I'm good at languages, but I'm bad at languages. Um, but yeah, I, I can speak, I mean, I don't, because I don't speak it in my everyday life, apart from the other word, I don't use it on Twitter, for example, where you might notice like a lot of Scottish people on Twitter use Scots on Twitter, but I, because I don't, it doesn't feel authentic for me to do it, but I can read it and write it and understand it. Um, and I, I think not having, I think the accent thing meant that I got very interested in accents and, you know, whenever I meet people, I always pick it up. Yeah, or I want I want to know like I wonder why they sound like that, or try and guess where they're from, you know. So um, I mean, like American accents, for example, I have. Uh, I think this is quite common in Britain. Like when we see, when we meet Americans in real life, there is a bit of a thing where we're like, "You guys sound like you're in the movies," you know. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like in films. I can't believe you're real. Wow. Uh, That's so funny. yeah, That's I think funny. that gave me a fascination with accents and, and, and things like that and um it all kind of ties into my interest in like words and sounds and well which one stuff. well which one can't you do because i i oh scouse that's easy how can i have a chicken in the breakfast you can have a chicken in the breakfast if you ask for chicken in your breakfast breakfast is it? breakfast <laughs> how do you say <laughs> <laughs> God, that, I, that's my favorite accent I, so, I'm sorry. I, I can do a word or two, but I, I certainly couldn't do anything that a Scouse would not be very offended by. Oh, my God. Um, one day, maybe. Yeah. But nothing uh, nothing authentic. You know, I, I can do like, I can do maybe like a caricature, but I wouldn't even want to try that. You could maybe do a character, <laughs> American, trying to do Scouser, you know, yeah, and then that would give you that, that excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say you could go hang out in Liverpool for a while, but you might never leave. You might... I This is really bad. I've never been to Liverpool, um, and I should go because it's. I've heard it's good. Really? Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I've, I mean, there's mixed. You know, there's mixed, it's got like a reputation, but um, but you know, the Beatles came from there, so it must have something. There are a lot of fighters from Liverpool too. There's a lot. That's oh, where I hear yeah. it so much. A lot of uh, Scouser fighters in MMA. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you, you you don't want to. Uh, you don't. That's why I'm not going to say anything bad. You don't want to upset <laughs> scouts because uh, they can they can hurt you. So yeah. Oh, I love that accent. It is so good. Is there an accent? Uh, so the British accent you can't do. And how do you feel about American? I know you've done American in a since he was introduced to the world of the Muppets in 1969. Big Bird has become one of America's most beloved icons. But beneath the cheery exterior lies a story of corruption, betrayal organized crime and drugs um you f it sounds like you feel comfortable with those i find it very hard i can do a, i can do accents that i hear in films a lot but i find it very hard to kind of get you know it's like the more specific it gets the more hard, the difficult it gets i also um find it hard to pick up the difference between canadians and americans if, if they're not doing a very stereotypical canadian accent you know oh uh, right 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 yeah so you know i can I can hear when they're doing a very strong kind of uh, thing, but but the more you know, the the the, the more smoothed out ones, it's uh, it's trickier. And also, like you know, uh, Americans always get very specific about if you're doing their accent right or wrong, which which is totally fair. Um, but it's funny because they have you guys have a bit of a uh, uh, what's reputation for not nailing other people's accents <laughs> which is why it can be kind of but we think we do when, yeah yeah <laughs> we think we and do that's the, that's 
that's the confidence we'd all like to have. You, know? so, <laughs> you guys are too polite to have that confidence. Uh, we're scared. We're uh, we, we've we've already done so many things. Uh, <laughs> we're uh, scared to face the consequences for. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> but also, but yeah, I mean, we get exposed to a lot of uh, American media, obviously. So it's easier for us to yeah, pick yeah. up. Yeah, you see it all the time. How, how bad have you bombed on stage before? Any stories? Oh. Um, Has anything ever been thrown at you? No, no. I think that's. I think it. it I don't know how much that happens in, in real where life. You are, but <laughs> it's not like the Blues Brothers, where yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, um, or like the Apollo Theater, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like that. Um, no, I think the worst bomb. Honestly, the worst bombings is is when. Is when they just do nothing. They just they just look at you. They oh, don't God. even respond. They just look at you like, how? Why are you here? What are you doing? We don't understand that. Yeah, that's the worst. The silence. What do you do? You you push through. It's like extracting teeth. You just. <laughs> you just I'm gonna finish this. Yeah, you go through. You do your time. You get off. You. Acknowledge it was bad, so no one thinks you're deluded. <laughs> to the uh, to the promoter, you go. That was terrible. Sorry. Thank. I'll have my money. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, they still uh, pay you, right? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I'm trying to think if anyone I know has never been paid. There's not a bomb clause, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because sometimes it's sometimes it can be the promote not the promoter's fault, but if the audience are super drunk or if the room is kind of weird, it depends on a lot of stuff. So. It's not necessarily always completely your fault, and uh, promoters know that. So, um, but yeah, no. If you just you know you turn up, you do what you're meant to do, and uh, sometimes they absolutely hate it. Not not often, obviously. Otherwise, or I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, but it hap- it happens to everyone. You know, even even people like you hear stories of incredibly successful comedians having bombing, and just you know, it really because we're also very like uh extreme kind of people we we need to feel like it's going well so if it's going badly we kind of you know you go is is that my career over should i stop doing this you know you have a whole <laughs> yeah. crisis oh my, oh my god i gotta take my my mitch hedberg story story um oh, no. but no if it, so i had one more question about that then i'll tell you my mitch oh, hedberg yeah. story um how, how do you deal with hecklers um most the good thing about hecklers do they take it easy on you because they go oh she's a young girl we're gonna well that's what i hope yeah but uh not in real life (laughs) um well the thing about hecklers is a lot of the time it's quite predictable or it's the same thing oh that's why you guys have such great comebacks yeah, it's not because we're geniuses. It's because sometimes the audience are quite uh, predictable. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're idiots. So we... And that's the, that's why they're not doing comedy. That's why they're in, yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of the time, and, and you know, sometimes people, it can be good natured. Uh, I think there's a misconception that, that comedians enjoy hecklers. I think most of the time we've kind of, we've got a routine and we want to do it. And a lot of it relies on... Um, certain timings and things and if someone shouts out that throws it off so uh yeah it's it's uh normally it's it's fine you know you just you give you put them down and that's it um and if they're being very unpleasant then it's just kind of a shame because they've kind of ruined it for everyone and yeah and nobody you, paid to see them, you know. Yeah, you kind of get the promoter over to like get them out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and yeah. some clubs in the stand for example, which is a kind of legendary Scottish club, they they don't even let in the kind of, pe- you know, bachelorette parties, the kind of people who might be doing, you know, they don't let, and they're very strict about that kind of thing. You know, you do really? get thrown out. So, yeah. Um, which is good because a lot of some clubs, you know, they don't really care what what's happening as long as they're getting money for from drinks and whatever. But the, but the stand really care if, you know, about the whole thing. So that's nice as a performer when you know that they're, they've got your back. So, so my favorite comedian has always been Mitch Hedberg. I swear, the right, first yeah. time I heard him or saw him right on TV, and he had the sunglasses on, mm-hmm. and yeah. I was like, "This is my guy." It, before him, I think it was Stephen Wright. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think they're kind of like they're adjacent, you know. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, 
Um, and so Mitch Hedberg came to Sacramento, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to see him. I didn't have any money, but, like, I put money together because I had to see fucking Mitch Hedberg because I thought yeah. he was an absolute genius. And I, we went to the comedy club. And he was a genius, right? He was a genius. But when we walk in, um, you know, I don't know if it's a typical comedy club. It's the only one I've ever been to. He's the only mm-hmm. comedian I've ever, I've ever gone to see. I would see you then. Okay. Um, and, and so there's a bar at the back, right? And so I saw some little skinny, I thought it was a skinny woman um, standing at the bar, you know, drinking gin, watching the other people, you know, perform. Yeah. And then um, because, like, the hair, I had the hair... And, you know, very petite. And so I thought, oh, yeah. you know, it's a it's a woman. And so we went and sat down and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, now it's time for the headliner. And they're like, oh, Mitch Hedberg. And, like, I'm like, oh, shit, that's Mitch Hedberg. Like, but he was so skinny. I didn't know it was because of the heroin, right? I thought I, I actually thought it was a woman. And so he comes <laughs> up, right, and he gets on stage. And it, it's kind of interesting because – I was laughing so hard. I was being obnoxious. And actually, everybody was laughing. No one was laughing as obnoxiously as me. But he actually stopped the show. And he's like, oh, so am I not funny? You know, I could I could quit if you guys don't think I'm funny. And we're like, I'm like, no, dude, you're hilarious. Don't go. Like, I wanted to hug him. You know what I mean? Oh, I was like, I wanted yeah. to run up there and go, no, Mitch, we love you. And, um, you know, he just looked really sad and then he did a couple more jokes and then he just left. And I was like, wow, what happened up there on stage? Why did he do that? Yeah. Because we were laughing, but he felt, I don't know if it was the drugs or I don't know what I it mean, was. I mean, it wouldn't help. Huh? It wouldn't help. They don't, they, yeah, they don't help. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and then, like, I think it was like a year later, you know, he they found him dead in that hotel. Um, oh, wow. With the you know with the drug overdose, so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's my uplifting Mitch Hedberg story. Oh, um, <laughs> so have you have you never gone back to see live comedy because you're scared you'll you'll kill? I'll kill, the, and... I'll kill the headliner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just keep doing yeah. that. It was me. It was a me. year later. Everyone everyone's dead. He's like, oh yeah, <laughs> there's this bald Mexican up front, and I just can't get that obnoxious laugh out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Give me drugs. <laughs> But that's amazing that you saw him live because, you know, that's a kind of legendary figure. He is Obviously legendary. because he, he passed away, so. And it'd be the equivalent of seeing, who was that guy in the 60s who, like, everybody talks about? Richard Pryor? Well, I, I, you know, honestly, it would kind of be like Richard Pryor, except he lived a little longer. But, no, the, oh, one, yeah. the one that was in the beginning who gets credit for, like, opening up comedy to, like, you know. Andy Kaufman? No. no. I don't know who that is. But that would be a good one, too. Yeah. To say you saw Andy Kaufman live, right? I mean, that yeah. would be so... I mean, I wouldn't have been laughing. I can laughing. name loads of dead people. But. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's go. Um, <laughs> that'd, be a, that'd be a nice game. So how are you with serial, kill- serial killers? Oh. Oh, I'm... I am... Love them. Yeah, I know. Okay. So one of the funniest bits on your entire freaking channel is your whole like little I don't know what what got into you but you did like a little like a little pocket yeah. of serial killers but it's like an influencer doing serial yeah. killers yeah, I don't know yeah, if everybody yeah. got that which might be why you quit no, I I don't know but also it's funny because so I that was one of the first things I did cuz the comments uh, are all turned off too Yeah oh yeah that's because I I got sometimes the newspapers if there's a, if it's a slow news day they will they will just report tweets Oh okay and they reported a tweet I did, and some people got some men. I, it was it was about sexism and comedy, oh, okay. and uh, some men got very upset, uh, and were just commenting on everything I'd done. So I just turned off all comments. That's why that's off. But because uh, no one, you know, I, nobody knew who I was, so all the comments were just these people, <laughs> and that was it. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I did that because I I always thought it was really funny. I'm very into true crime yeah yeah um but i also think it's very funny the way it is now i mean it's always been a thing but it's now very kind of like not sanitized but but what i was kind of trying to parody was yeah was the um there is a lot of youtube channels which are true crime and makeovers or true crime and you're not lying yeah 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 so 
That was kind of the idea that. No, I got um, the bit. I thought it was brilliant. (laughs) I got the bit totally. I thought it was brilliant. I'm like, oh, she's talking about, you know, these women who were like putting on their makeup and talking about like a family being slaughtered. Like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, and you know, I watch them. I'm, I'm, I watch it. But I also think, what are we doing? This is weird. You know, this, it's, it's funny because they've really tapped into two things that women really love, which is makeup and horrific stories of people being horribly killed. Like, Right. And you, did, and you, the best one you had was, uh, in my opinion, obviously, you know, you did it, um, is the, um, the most fashionable serial killers or no, oh, the best yeah. face, the best facial hair. Number eight, John Wayne Gacy. Um, I wasn't even going to put him on here, but I just want to say like fat men should not have tiny little mustaches. It just makes them look fatter. Okay. That's facial hair. Yeah. Who won that? Good stuff. Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh, probably someone like... I think Ed Gein was up there because the he had that Ripper. little stubble, right? Oh, the yeah. Yorkshire Ripper, because he had the hair. He had the, he had the Cat Stevens look, <laughs> which is very weird. <laughs> very weird. Um, but I saw, um, because I was, I was looking at your shows, did you interview someone from the Golden State Killer case, or was that... Yeah, I interviewed the district attorney who brought him down. That is really, insane. She was awesome. She never gave up. Never gave yeah. up. Never yeah, gave up. I, I, I followed that whole thing because it was mm-hmm. um, really crazy. I mean, you know, obviously. And it was your area of California. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's really, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I could, I mean, obviously I could go deep into that. But yeah, they, it's pretty interesting because, um, you know, she was, the, she's the same age I am. So when mm-hmm. we were in our, you know, early, late teens, uh, that's when he was like at his high, at his high point yeah. around in this area, and it changed the way we lived. It really did. Yeah. It changed the way we lived. It took the innocence out of this entire area, which until that time had been honestly kind of a you picture California with a little love yeah. vans and you know what I mean. That's what this area was, and yeah, yeah. A- after the Golden, a- we called him the East Area Rapist. Um, yes, yeah. After the East Area Rapist, people got dogs. They started locking their doors. They put dowels in their windows. Mm. Um, and yeah, but, but Anne-Marie Schubert, she stayed with it, stayed with it. And she did that stuff with the DNA, mm. nailed him. She said he's so evil because, you know, she had to spend time face to face with the guy. Yeah. Right? Oh my God. And there's good footage at the end of that video of mm-hmm. him, um, putting stuff on his windows because he likes it dark because the dark allows him to relive those murders. Yeah. Yeah, um, oh yeah, it's kind of scary. It really is. But I, it, it's really scary. I loved the, I loved your whole set there of the serial. <laughs> it was hilarious, and I want you to know I got the bit, and I thought it was That's brilliant. Good. I'm glad people. I'm glad. I'm glad people got. <laughs> I was thinking. I was like, I hope no one thinks this is me. I hope no one thinks this is serious. And <laughs> like, yeah, this is very distasteful. Well, that's um, why I thought you stopped because I thought maybe people were going, "Oh, this is distasteful," and I was like, "No, it's funny." No, I think I just didn't get anything from it. I was kind of like, I'm, you know, I've got other stuff to do. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave this here, but, um, but I, I enjoyed doing it. So I'm glad that people, because now, you know, now that they go back, yes. And, and, um, I've, I've had messages from friends that I've done videos with and they're like, for some reason, this video has got loads of views recently. And I'm like, I think everyone's just going through everything I've never done just to see what else, you know. Um, so that's kind of, yeah. Uh, that's funny because I'm like, oh, I forgot I did that. And now, like, random people are watching it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's been funny. So a couple couple questions before before, mm-hmm. we, before we go. Is there any, is there any um, of these, you know, of your shorts that you've, you've mapped out and then you were like, well, first of all, do you do them live or do you, do you script it? Um, it's kind of semi-improvised. It's like I, I get the idea, I get the title in my head and then I kind of do about five minutes of just kind of improvising it. And then I, a lot ends up on the into. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've always wondered about that. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there any that you have thought of doing, but you were like, no, that's too deep. Like people wouldn't get that. Like any, like you're going to do Kafka talking to somebody, right? I mean, yeah. Is there any that you, you want to do, there's, but you're like, they wouldn't yeah. get it. There's definitely, especially like literature. I think there's definitely things where I'm like, are there enough people out there who know what this is 
to enjoy this or I'm just trying to think there have been things or like very specific moments in history that I don't think have enough um, global awareness for people to be like, I mean, I did one actually that I, uh, that I still think is mostly a joke for me, which was Robert Burns, but Walter Scott meeting Robert Burns, <laughs> okay. which is true. And this happened. I don't want to say I am the next Rabbi Burns, but, um, my English teacher has said that we pay him a lot of money. I saw that. That's the last one I saw uh, because I didn't get it, but it was funny. (laughs) It was funny. And and the accents were great. Thank you. Yeah. I I, I enjoyed doing more of a Edinburgh accent for Walter Scott, but he, um, it's, it's what I find funny about a lot of this stuff is a lot of it was, is true. And that's why it's funny because it's, history and it, it really happened is that Walter Scott was was you know he was a teenager and he was a massive fan of, of Robert Burns and he kind of based all his stuff on Robert Burns and it's just but you know he was this very posh upper class teenager and Robert Burns was this working class kind of poet and I just think it's really f- like they did meet in real life uh and I just I thought it was really funny imagining this kind of privileged kind of frat not frat boy but you know like that kind of guy meeting like a, a real person and, and doing that kind of patronizing yeah, stuff yeah. where <laughs> they kind of go, yeah, yeah, I know. I know uh, I, I've written poetry too, actually. And, and my life's kind of hard in a way. Cause I also have like, I get sad sometimes. Um, <laughs> so it's just kind of, I just think that's funny. And that's funny to me because I, that's how I imagine it happened. Um, but it might not be funny if you don't know much about Walter Scott. I did not know Walter <laughs> Scott. But I got it. I got the bit. Yeah. Because you do enough in your jokes where I go, oh, this guy's this class, this guy's this class. Okay, yeah, I yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good to know. It's good to know that there's a kind of universal uh, trope there that it mm. plays into. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm sure there's an American equivalent of, a, you know, like a, a, a beat poet or, or something <laughs> and a, a, a fancy writer meeting. But <laughs> yeah, that's good. Hey, there's your next one. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um or or like um I mean people have kind of already done this but I love that uh Henry David Thoreau went and lived in the woods and it was kind of to be like closer to nature but also his sister was doing all his laundry and bringing him food and things and it's kind of like so like a rich person living in the woods not a you know not is, a real <laughs> Is that a bit or is that real? That's real. Yeah. Oh my god, I'd never heard that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he kind of he lived like, you know, he was doing like a kind of spiritual retreat gap Walden kind Pond, of thing. right? Walden yeah, Pond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, gap, and I don't think he, I don't think he meant to trick anyone. Like, but the the idea we have of him is that he was yes. removed from Nate from society and right. But he wasn't. Yeah, he his family were visiting. They were giving him stuff. They were doing his <laughs> housework. He would have had cable if it were invented. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. very, um, it's like, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's very like privileged, uh, privileged guy pretends to be poor for a bit kind of thing. So. <laughs> I like the gap year. That's good. It was like taking yeah. a gap year. It's, uh, a, it's a good <laughs> equivalent. So, so last question, mm. favorite monarch pre oh. pre 1900. That's good. Cause I don't like any of the ones yeah, after no. then anyway. I, and, and I knew you didn't. So I want to give you a reason not to. Um, in Britain or, or ever? Britain. Uh, okay. I like, let me just go through all of them in my head first. J- uh, James the, oh, I'm pretty sure I haven't got this wrong, but I could be wrong. James the fourth of Scotland was, uh, uh, not, not Britain, Scotland, was responsible for what is known as the Scottish probably just in Scotland, uh, as the Scottish Renaissance. And that was uh, a big flourishing of stuff. Really? Yeah. Um, a big yep. kind of pushing Scotland, before the Union, pushing Scotland into kind of, uh, you know, the 14th century, lots of arts and things were happening and uh, writing and things. And he he really did cool stuff that made the country kind of more connected to the rest of Europe. But if you're talking about like, monarchs that i just enjoy l- kind of laughing about i think james the sixth slash first is quite oh fun. yeah 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 mary mary uh, son right yes yeah because he f- 
he was one of those guys who, because he was a you know a king he's obviously been told he's great um but he was one of those guys who was um wrote books on stuff because he decided he was an expert on it he was obsessed with witchcraft and he thought everyone was out to get him yeah he was also um really bad he had really bad table manners it was really gross and uh <laughs> i didn't know that used to- yeah didn't know that. just fun things like that yeah so i kind of like him because he kind of uh is just a bit of a, a character yeah but not not a good person I but a, a character i didn't know he had bad table manners and i know he was the guy that brought along all the witch trials and yeah he had that book the excalibur uh, there's a certain book yeah, demonology yeah there was a name of it though that they it was a latin name uh I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, we'll figure but yeah. it out. Yeah. That was like a big deal with him. And yeah, I always yeah. thought he was interesting. I've always thought he was interesting because it was Mary's mm. revenge. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, fuck yes. you, Elizabeth. Right? <laughs> How's my son taste? I'm going to get there in the end. Yeah, that's right. It's just, you know, she'd get there. It was just going to be her, well, you know, son. That's, that's the thing about being the Virgin Queen is. <laughs> yeah, it l- reduces your odds. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite monarch um, from Britain? Queen Mary. Queen Mary. I just nice. think she's amazing. I think I love the way, you know, she went up north, put the, put her shit together. Um, you know, they, they, they put poor, poor Jane Grey in there um, and, you know, tried to make her queen, this poor young woman who yeah. probably didn't even know what was going 16 on. 16 or something. Yes, yes. And, but all the, you know, the the her husband and all those guys tried to put her in there but mary just would not be denied mary would not be denied and as a woman in that day to Mm. to you know what i mean i I don't i don't mean as a woman i mean in that period right no yeah the odds were against her and she just and she was a redhead and you know and she just put it together and said no uh uh-uh i'm taking this and she took it um i mean she, she you know some stuff she did after that you know (laughs) well i think it's really hard when I think it's really hard when your dad divorces your mum and also tries to pretend you kind of were illegitimate and <laughs> it's, paints you out of paintings and just is kind of a, a dick. And, it messes with your head a bit. Yeah, I would be angry. <laughs> I would you, be annoyed. I, it's the painting out of paintings. I'm, dad, I don't mind the words. Words heal. It's the painting There's, out of paintings. <laughs> It's making me the dog, like, you know, p- painting the beagle over me. <laughs> Big paint, oh, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's quite a famous picture of uh, of Henry with his children where it's, you've probably, you've probably seen it, it's Henry and Edward's right next to him, Elizabeth's over there, and then Mary is, like, all the way in the corner, like, <laughs> like my friends and Zoidberg, you know, that kind of thing. Where... Yeah, right. <laughs> Mary. Oh, she's there too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like the Boleyn sister. Or it's like the uh, yeah, it, yes, right? It's like but the real. third, yeah, the third Boleyn. Or is yes, it, the third, yeah. yes, the yeah. other other Boleyn girl. The other other Boleyn girl, right? The one who isn't Natalie Portman or Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> that was a great bit. So, um, thank you, Eleanor. Eleanor Morton, you have a show going on right now. I think next month in Edinburgh, it's uh, Eleanor Morton is peaking. Eleanor Morton has peaked. Has peaked. Has peaked. Now, wh- and the reason you gave it that title? Because I don't think you've peaked. <laughs> Thank you. No, it was called uh, Shehalian, uh-huh. which is the name of a mountain in Scotland that I climbed. Uh-huh. And then my agent said, people won't know what that word means. Call it something else. So <laughs> now it's a play. It's a pun on hills. Well done. Well done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I will. Oh, oh, hey. So you mentioned rap, right? You're in a rap and you're, you're a comedian. Do comedians yeah. have beefs with other comedians? Like rap artists have beefs, you know, East Side, um, West Side. Do you guys like have little, you know, not, like not as fun ones, not as fun ones, just just petty squabbles. Oh. Um, so no, not really. But I, I can, I can, I can make one up. Make a beef up with another comedian, right? <laughs> like do a drive by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go heckle him because you're a pro, right? Go heckle yeah. their show. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's how it works. It, hecklers are always just other comedians. Who right, are, right. That's bringing it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eleanor Morton, thank you so much. You have the greatest, the funniest, you are the funniest thing on YouTube right now. You're blowing up, and it's because it's for good reason, because you're brilliant. You. And you're, you, you really are. Um, I, it's been an, 
I, I'm having to stop myself because I could go on forever. So um, thank you so much for <laughs> thank being Thank you so here. much. Yeah. No, and, thank uh, you. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Hey, if you like what you hear, like and subscribe. It really means a lot. 